Many of you guys have stepped out to be a part of House Church over the last semester. We've seen God move in such an incredible way. We've seen house churches serving their communities. We've seen needs being met. We've seen multiple baptisms that resulted from the relationships cultivated in house church. And we've heard story after story of how God is building and restoring families on Wednesday nights. But we want you to hear from others just like you who have bought into house church and have seen it make a difference in their lives. Listen to this. I love knowing that at any time during the week, there's a group of people willing to pray for me and have my back, not just on Wednesday nights, but all week. I love that anytime someone shares a need or prayer request in our group meet, someone always responds and says, praying right now. I love this one. As the youngest adult in the group at age 24, I love that my house church is made up of those from all ages that have so much wisdom uh, to teach me each week. I'm amazed each week by lessons I learned from those around me. Listen, you can't make that stuff up. If you're not a part of a house church here at Venture, you're missing out. A new semester is ahead of us, so take that next step into community. Join a house church, let God build relationships in your life and see what your story will be. Well, let me welcome you wherever you are today. If you're right here at one of our campuses or if you're watching online in your living room on this cold January morning, we're glad you're with us. And to no big surprise, the drama of 2020 has carried over into 2021. And it didn't take long, right? Wednesday night hit, and like all of you, uh, we watched in amazement as to what's going on in our country. And it was no big surprise, it was no big shock that this year we're going to have to deal with some things that are probably going to leave us with questions. In fact, Thursday night, my wife and I got to go on a date and we went to Mario's. If you had not been to Mario's, you're missing out, all right? And one of the things that Katie asked me, I thought it was a great question, she said, hey, you know, what do we do as believers that have been put here during this time, what's our response to all the things that are happening? And for her, and she described this so well, she said it's almost like there's a constant low-grade fever that we're dealing with that just won't leave with the drama. And as fate would have it, I love this, today in our Bible reading plan, or actually Thursday, you guys know this, we're preaching on Sundays from the Bible reading plan. So on Thursday, you are going to read about a family that dealt with a lot of drama. You're going to deal with a family that was in the middle of some trauma, and we're going to look at that family because I believe they answer the question for us so well with what do we do in response to all that's going on around us. When everything's turned upside down, what is our next move as believers? And I believe our next move is to come alive with our faith. And let me show you where I get that. So you guys join me. We're going to be in John 11 today. And I want to go ahead and tell you, typically when we're teaching, we've got two or three passages that we're laying out to you. We try to give you some application from that passage, right? You know the drill. Then we pray at the end. Now, today's a little different, so hang with me because I need you to see this whole experience, right? You can't tell somebody what's going on in 2021 without drawing, uh, drawing the story out and giving them some context. And so for this passage today, you're going to be in the middle of a story. And I want to go ahead and tell you it's a lot. You can follow along with me as I read. I'm not a great reader, so just get ready. Hang with me. You don't want to miss it because I think you're going to see some things in here that we need today. That we need to be reminded that as we face this year, it is the year for us to come alive in our faith like never before because things around us are crazy. Okay, here we go. Let's read together. John 11, you guys join me. Now, a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from the city, from the community, from the village of Bethany, the village where Mary and her sister Martha. Now, this Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, saying, Lord, the one that you love, he is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. Notice for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was for two more days. Now, red light, right? Hold on, something's, something's up here. Uh, Jesus, John sets the, the stage so well. He says, this is Jesus' friend, Lazarus. And then he says, well, you, you know Lazarus. He's from Bethany, right? You know him? He's from down there in Gulfport. Well, if that doesn't do it for you, then you know him. His sister was Mary. Gosh, dog, it, it, Martha. 
You know Mary, Martha, Bethany. He's, he's, he's putting all the dots out there and he's connecting them so that we can understand that Lazarus, the one that is sick, is someone that is in the inner circle of Jesus. This wasn't a random person. This was someone who knew, loved, and followed Jesus. Yet the thing I need you to see is he still was going through a hard time. Now, if we're going to make it through this year, the very first thing that I need to tell you is we need to reset our expectations. In this world, you will have trouble. It rains on the just in the same way that it rains on the unjust. Over the holiday season, one of my good friends, Blair and Spencer Taylor, many of you know them, and their little girl, Sayla. Sayla, if you are watching today from home, can I just say hello? And you look beautiful on the other end of the camera. Sayla's a fourth grade little girl, and she was in Seattle for two weeks during the holidays having her 13th surgery. Now, Sayla would tell you that God has used this, that her ministry is way beyond a lot of us because we're talking about Sayla today and the battle and the fight that she's put up. And I want you to understand that some of these things that are happening to all of us aren't necessarily because you or I caused them. Now, sometimes we make poor decisions and we have to face the consequences of that. Sometimes it's the reality that if we've got to blame somebody for all that we're going through, we might just need to blame Adam and Eve. This is a fallen world. It's just the world that we live in. This world, you will experience trouble. This world, things are not going to work out. And the first thing I want you to do is set your expectations for 2021. It could get difficult. It could get dark. Why? Because this is a fallen world. And we're here to be a light in what is a difficult and a fallen world. So what do we do when it gets difficult? Because that's one of the questions that we're all kind of asking. Well, did you see what Mary and Martha did? This was so good. Their brother's dying. They need help. Where do they run? Well, they send a messenger to Jesus. Can we just start there? When difficulties come this year, would the place that you run not be from Jesus but to Jesus? What a great place to start in 2021. We're going to reset our expectations. We know this year is going to be difficult. And when the difficulties come, instead of running from him, we're going to run to him. What a great place to start. Now let's keep reading. It's just beginning to get good. Verse 7. And then Jesus said to his disciples. He said, well, let's go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said a short while ago, the Jews that were there, they tried to stone you. And yet you, you want to go back? Well, Jesus answered. He said, our friend Lazarus, he's fallen asleep. But I'm going to go there to wake him up. Now his disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. Now, the disciples always make us feel better because they just say some of the dumbest things, right? Verse 14, so then Jesus had to just tell them like it is, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Verse 16, then Thomas, good old Thomas, said to the rest of the disciples, Let's also go that we may die with him. Now, Thomas of all people, when you think about Thomas, you think about doubting Thomas. But in this moment, Thomas says, I feel like something good is about to happen. Jesus is talking about going to heal this man, to wake him up. This man is dead, and he wants to go back and do a work. Thomas says something that's interesting. He says, let's go. Now, if we're going to survive this year, the second thing we've got to do to reset is we've got to reset our faith. Some of us, man, we've had some difficult things happen, and we have backed off. Some of us have gone all hog, all in on a particular party or candidate, and now we're going, oh, man, what do we do? This isn't working out the way I thought it would. Listen, would you just see what Thomas does? He says, look, I'm going to be with Jesus. I'm not going to miss what Jesus is about to do, and I'm going to step out in my faith and bring my people with me to follow Jesus. Because I believe something good is about to happen. Now, this is where it gets really good, and I didn't see this until I studied it, okay? One book over, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. One book over, you get to Acts. Acts 9, you have Peter. Peter's going from village to village, okay? In the middle of his sharing the good news in the villages, they come running out to Peter, and they say, Peter, there's a problem. Tabitha, the disciple, has died. What do we do? Now, this is so cool. Peter says, let's all gather around Tabitha. I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask God to do a miracle in Tabitha's life, and let's see what happens. If you know the story, Peter heals Tabitha. Tabitha raises from the dead. Why did Peter know he could do that? 
Because Peter and the disciples were a part of Jesus' life when Jesus did the miracle in Lazarus' life. So Peter did what he did because he saw Jesus do what Jesus did. Here's the question we got to deal with. What's the next generation going to do because they saw us do it in faith? When the next pandemic hits, it's going to hit. It happens about once every 10 years. When the next political party, when the next candidate, when your relationship gets difficult, and then when your kid's marriage gets difficult, are they going to do what you did? When things get hard at work and you think, I want to flee, I want to run, are they going to do what you did? What are you modeling for the next generation venture? Let's ask this. This is such a good question. What's the next generation of leaders and venturites going to do? Are they going to plant campuses? Are they going to stay seated or are they going to serve? Are they going to give generously or are they going to soak it up? Boy, that's a tough question for me because I've got two that are watching me 24-7. And they're watching how my marriage works. They're watching how I work. They're watching how I parent and how I lead. They're going to be standing on the backs of our shoulders. And I have to ask this question, what kind of faith are we modeling? Tabitha never gets healed without Lazarus dying. And because Lazarus died, Jesus did a work. And then Peter said, I'm going to do what Jesus did. And so one day the next generation is going to say, I'm going to do what the previous generation did when things got difficult. I'm going on a social media rant. Well, man, I'm going, to, I'm going to drill in. And I'm going to take the things that are under my control and the ministry that God's given me. And I'm going to continue to lead. I'm going to continue to be faithful. Now, here's a quote you need to hear. This is so good. Maybe the place you feel like Jesus is failing is actually the place that Jesus is working. Now, we need that right now because it seems like a lot of things are failing. But I need you to think about Mary and Martha. Lazarus was dying under their care. They're asking, where is Jesus? They sent a messenger. The messenger found Jesus, and he came back, and he said, I told Jesus, well, then where is he? And then in the first century, okay, think about this. Their brother is dying under their care. There's no hospice. There's no hospital. There's no magic medicine to take care of the thing that Lazarus is dying from. There's just fever. There's vomiting. There's sleepless nights. And there's two ladies, two sisters that are caring for the one that they love, and they have to literally watch him die. Don't you know they had some questions about what was going on? And listen, somebody's watching today, and you've got so many questions. Why is this happening to me? Listen to this. Listen so closely. Without Lazarus dying, you don't get the miracle. Without the miracle, you don't get the miracle that happens one book over for Tabitha. Whatever it is that you're facing, it's going to be your platform. It's going to be your chance to rise up in faith, and then you're going to recycle that pain, and you're going to use it. God's going to use it in someone else's life. I get to see it all the time. I talk to a couple that says, we're in a difficult place in my marriage. What do I do? And I say, let me connect you with this person that I love. They were where you were. How I get to see it all the time. I'm dealing with depression and anxiety, sleepless nights. I've lost my appetite. Is it ever going to pass? Let me connect you with this person. They've been where you were, and they're on the other side of it now. Man, i got teenagers in my house, and I don't know what to do with them. Well, let me connect you with so many wonderful parents that I know that survived those years. Listen, you're asking, how are we going to get through this season? This isn't the first season that we face like this as a country. Come on. We've been here before, and we've risen up as people of faith, and we've said our hope's not in a policy, our hope's not in a person, our hope's not in a position. Our hope's not in the left, it's not in the right. Our hope is in the center, and Jesus is above all of it. And that's where we rest and we restore our faith to walk into the next year because we're going to need our faith when things get difficult. Now let's keep reading. It's just getting better. Verse 17, hang with me. Now on his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had been in the tomb. You ready? For four days. That's four days dead. That's real dead. Now when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, I love this about Martha because I think I would do this. She went out to meet him. Mary stayed home. Martha goes running out. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will still do whatever you ask. Then Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Then Martha answers back, well, I I know he'll rise again. Sunday school answer, you ready? In the resurrection of the last day. Well, then Jesus said to her, well, listen, I am the resurrection and the life. 
And the one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me, he will never die. Do you believe this? Verse 27. Well, yes, Lord, she replied. I I believe that you're the Messiah. I know you're the Son of God who is to come into the world. Martha kind of puts him off a little bit. Like, I, I know, I know. If you'd have been here earlier, Jesus, we could have seen something. And on the last day, something's going to happen. And here's the third thing we've got to do. If we're going to survive and if we're going to come alive in our faith, we've got to reset our timeline. I am, this is the one that convicts me the most. Can I just be honest? Because I want to think what happened in the past, really for me, I want to think what's going to happen in the future. I'm the guy on vacation driving home. I'm planning my next one. Katie's like, would you just chill? Like, just be here. Let's just be present. Can we just enjoy today? And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm ready for the next one, for the next one. And, and that, that's what happens all the time. As preachers, we're so guilty of this. We will talk to you a hundred times about the day that you walked the aisle, the day that you prayed to ask God into your heart. Those are important days, no doubt. We'll talk to you a hundred times, all the time, every sermon. Heaven's going to be amazing. Streets of gold. What happened to today? I think that's what Lazarus is, what's happening right here with Jesus. He's like, Martha, I hear you, and one day we will be together in heaven. But he's saying, I've come, and I want to do a work in Jesus' life when? Now. You, you mean like January 10th, 2021, Jesus wants to do a, life, a work in my life now. Yes, like now. N- not what happened in the church you grew up in. Not the way that your grandparents or your parents did things. He's saying, today, I'm ready to do a work now. I'm ready to see something. I'm ready to see you come alive in your faith today, not about last year. Many of you, if you were honest, you'd say, maybe last year you were dead in your faith. That's okay. He says, here's what's important. I'm ready to see you come alive in your faith now. I love this about baptism. You You know the line, right? You're buried with Christ, and you're raised to walk today. You're raised to walk now. And I think in 2021, Jesus is saying, this is the time. It's not an accident that you're here now. It's not something to be so scared of and fearful of that your kids are growing up in a world that's this crazy. Yes, they are, but this is the season that God ordained for them and for you and for me. This is our time to lead during the season we've been given. And he's saying, come alive in your faith now. And I love this. I studied this a little bit, and it was really interesting because I've noticed in our faith today, the symbol that we all use for Christians is the cross. And, man, of course, there's nothing more symbolic to who we are than the fact that Jesus died on the cross, and so we wear a cross. But this is really interesting. When you go back to the very first of this movement of Jesus, to the book of Acts, the art that was symbolic for our faith wasn't necessarily the cross. It was the resurrection. The thing, the images, the art that you see that displays Jesus' life, it really wasn't in the first hundred years just the image of the cross. It was him teaching. It was miracles that he performed. It was the resurrection. It's a, see, it's a, we, live in a, we need to live in a divided house. You know this. Earlier over here at Lincoln Road, I saw somebody with an Auburn mask. Some of you live in a divided house. You have an Auburn fan and an Alabama fan. Some of you, bless you, you have an Ole Miss fan and a Mississippi State fan. All right? And you pick. It's a divided house. That's how we are as believers. It's the cross and it's the resurrection. And in 2021, would you focus on the resurrection? Jesus already paid the penalty. It's all happened. The cross is so symbolic and so important. But it's the resurrection that he's saying let's step into today. Jesus says, I've come to do a work now in your boy Lazarus' life. Martha, if you want to talk to me about heaven and all that's going to happen then, that's fine. But right now I'm on a mission to go do a work today in his life. So how? How do I come alive now? Well, I love the pattern that we see. The first thing they do is they ask, Jesus, would you come alive in me? God, would you do a work in Lazarus? Peter, God, would you do a work in Tabitha? Man, if we're going to come alive in our faith, just start with that. Say, listen, God, would you, would you help me understand your mercy and your grace new? I am fearful. I am scared. Would you comfort me today? Ask God, would you make me alive in who I am in Christ? Could I begin to worship and read Scripture in a different way this year? First thing we do is we ask. The second thing we do is we begin to flip the script and we win the day. Man, I am so tired of seeing the enemy win. Right? 
I mean, it's like we're constantly taking on all these things, and lots of them are lies. And the truth is, we are who we are in Christ. That is where our identity is. And Jesus says, as believers, you ready for this? You're going to shake the gates of hell. I feel like sometimes we're getting shook. We're not shaking. We're going to sit back in a little prevent defense and watch everything happen in this world around us. And I think this is a season in 2021 not to be offensive, but to move from defense to offense. To say, hey man, listen, the resurrection happened. We are victorious in our faith. Our hope is not in a politician or a position. It's in the person of Jesus. And that's where my identity is going to be. And that's how I'm going to win the day when things get difficult because my hope is in Jesus. Now, last section, don't miss it, verse 38, here we go. Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone that was laid across the entrance. Verse 39, take away the stone, he said. I love this. But Lord, said Martha, of course Martha said this, the smell, the sister of the dead man, by this time there's a bad odor, for he's been in there, again, four days dead. Now, King James Version, I think this is so cool. It says, he stinketh. (laughs) You will use that later today. (laughs) You stinketh. Verse 40. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and he said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Can we just rest in that? Father, you have heard me. I know that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people listening that they may believe that you sent me, verse 43. Then he said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out. His hands and his feet were wrapped with strips of linen. His cloths were around his face. And Jesus said to them, begin to take off the grave clothes and let him go. Now, the first thing that you got to see in that, (laughs) Jesus was really specific. He didn't just yell in that tomb, come out. I don't know who all would have come up out the tomb. Jesus said really specifically, listen, I see you in there, Lazarus. You come out. This is the year in 2021. I'm telling you where Jesus is looking at you, and he's looking at me, and he's saying, come out from under the rock. Come out into my grace. Come on out into this fellowship. Get in a house church. Begin to serve. Be a part of what we're doing. Come out. And he's calling you specifically. He didn't just leave a vague call to that tomb. He said, Lazarus, this is you. This is your year to lead your family to come out. And then he gave him one last instruction, and this is where we end, because this is so powerful. And if we're going to reset this year, this is the last thing. We've got to let the past be the past. He says, drop the grave clothes. Now, if you're up in one of our venues, don't drop any clothes. But this was symbolic. This was symbolic. He was saying, let's leave the past in the past, Lazarus. You know who that was probably the hardest for? Mary and Martha. They wanted to talk about the sickness. They wanted to talk about all that Lazarus went through until that moment when Lazarus comes walking out, the conversation changed. No longer did they talk about when Lazarus died. They talk about when Lazarus came to life. Man, would this be the year for you? Man, don't talk about your bad church experience. Don't talk about the disappointments. Talk about how this was the year that you laid it down, you took it off, and you walked out of the grave, and you came alive in your faith. And what led us to this place? Disaster all around us. But God used it for it be the year that you said, I've got to come alive in something bigger. Politics has let me down. It's not the religion I need. I'm going to come alive in my faith today. Now, stand up with me, all of our campuses. You guys stand up with me. We're going to close out today because the only thing to do after a message, after we be in Scripture, is to shift all of our heart's attention, all of our mind's affection. I think I got that backwards. We want to shift that and focus on Jesus. I love this song because we're going to sing about when death was arrested. And the point of singing this song is so that you would visualize a year where you come alive in your faith. Let's pray together. God, I thank you so much. You never give up on us. But God, you see us in the middle of all this that's going on and you say, I can use this, even this. This can be the year that I get your attention to say, don't put your hope in the left or the right. Put your hope in me in the center above it all. And this year, God, you're calling us really specifically to say, would you come alive? Let's let the past go. Take it off. 
Let's get our expectations right. It's going to be difficult. And you're saying, but I'm not going to leave you. You can renew your faith in me. You can stand in me. You can live in me. You can rest in me. You can even worship in me because I am with you today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.